Um, but we're excited and continuing on in our series. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been an amazing series. It's not a series that like, oh, will this series ever end? And no, this is a powerful series. We've loved this series. Hopefully you've enjoyed this series. The power of choice and how we must choose wisely. And uh, today, if you have your Bibles, make sure you grab those, whether it's paper or digital, uh, and turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. We're going to be reading a ton of text today, probably about 15 to 20 verses. Um, but today, we're going we're gonna to lean into this one first, and I think you'll get an idea of where we're going. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, it says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. So run to win. There is a race that is taking place, and we are encouraged to run to win. I love the callers of race. Uh, I know I've shared a few stories. Uh, a long, long time ago, I used to be a runner. Uh, no longer anymore. Uh, now I'm just an eater. And so there's a difference between the two. And, and so uh, at, the, you know, at the starting line, they would say, runners, on your mark, right? And then they would say, ready, set, go. And you're like, oh, yes, I can do that. I'm ready. I'm set. Gun goes off. Ah, I'm not sure. I, I, I feel more comfortable sitting in church than leaving church. I feel, I feel at ease when I'm, when I'm just called to that comfortable Christianity. But, but for all of us, we're all called to go. Let's unpack a few more scriptures this morning. In Mark 16, 15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the good news. It does not say all the missionaries go into the world and preach the good news. It says all, as in you, me, all of us, our family is, is called to go into all the world, not some of the world, not just the United States, but all the world and preach the good news. Matthew 28, 19 says, go therefore and make disciples. We love Pastor Kim. We love our next gen ministries with our kids and our students. And that's awesome. We love it. And we invest. We partner with you though. It is not the role of Pastor Kim and Radiant Life Church to make your children disciples. It's up to you to disciple your children. Because we're all called to have that investment, so we're supposed to go and make disciples. Isaiah 6, 8 says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to, these, to this people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. So who will go? Me. Right? That was Isaiah. Who's going to go? That's, I, I, I'm going to nominate myself, and I wonder if today that's the heart, your heart. God's heart, your heart, as in, man, who's going to go? That will be me. See, Christianity isn't about sitting and waiting for the right time to get up and go. Christianity is about movement. It's about perseverance. It's about a forward trajectory of running your race until you've reached the finish line, right? You're running with a passion, like you're running with your, with your mind set and your gaze is fixed on Christ. And I'm going to run my race until I cross that finish line one day, which means I'm going to run until I take my last breath. The great thing about running the race is that we run it together, right? We're in this together. I want you to think about this race as a relay race. And uh, in a relay race, there's four runners. In a relay race, they're, they're a team and they're running with, with, with the same desire to win the prize, but there's something that's very important, which is this baton. Just so happens we got a Radiant Life Church baton. baton. If you want one of these, you just gotta be a member, so sign up and we're gonna get you one of these, all right? So, I mean, because who doesn't want a piece of plastic with a logo on it, right? But, but this baton here is so important when it comes to the relay race. You see, there's an exchange that happens. You see, each runner runs their own leg, and then they hand off the baton. And so typically, you know, you're like, oh, so the fastest team wins, typically, but it's also the team that makes the best exchange, Right? So there is a zone, a, a transition zone a couple meters long that they have to pass the baton to their teammate. If they don't pass the baton in that zone or the baton is dropped, there's a disqualification. So a lot of relay races are won right here. A passing of the baton, a handing over, a letting go. And so passing the baton is essential to win the race. And I don't know about you, but I want to win the race. Julian, would you mind doing me a favor? Would you come stand up right here? Can you do that for me? That's awesome. I appreciate that. So you see Jacob in the back there? He's going to run a race with you. And so I'm going to ask you to do a full sprint back to Jacob. If you knock him over, you get more points, okay? Yeah. Like if you go through him, I'll give you money. Like that's what I'm talking about this morning. So it's very important. You're running a relay race. So you're going to, put, you're going to take the baton and you're going to run and you're going to hand it to Jacob. Are you ready? All right. Ready, set, go. Wait. What are you supposed to hand to him? So why didn't you grab the baton? Oh, okay. So you, so you need something, right? Okay, let's try it again. Okay, you ready? Ready? 
set, go. I, ready, set, go. Weren't, you're not going. Why? I don't have the baton. You don't have the baton. Hey, can you give it up for Julian and Jacob this morning? Thanks, buddy. You can have a seat. Here's why that's so important. This thing right here, you are unable to hand off what you hold on to. Right? You are unable to hand off what you hold on to. Like, no, this is mine. I don't want to share it with others. This is, this is my life, and I'm not going to give it to others. And today we're going to be talking about the power of choice and that we can choose to hand off a legacy. We can choose to leave a legacy. We can choose to empower not the next generation, but the generation to be able to run with dream, with dreams and a vision and a passion if we choose to let go, if we choose to hand off. And so it's hard when we just wanna hang on. And so we have to be willing to let go. It's, we're unable to hand off what we hold on to. And here's a few key things when it comes to running a race. Uh, the first is this, if you're taking notes, you have to start with the baton, right? The, if you start off in the, in the blocks and you're ready to go and you don't have the baton in your hand, you're not gonna run the race and your team can't win the race. And so it's important that you, you start with the baton. So the race begins with a relationship. You ever hear me? This race begins with a relationship. It begins with a passion and a heart and a desire to follow Jesus. Our theme verse for the whole series is Joshua 24, 15. It says this, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose. This is the power of choice. You choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. It's not a choice that your great-grandparents, your grandparents, your parents make for you. It's a choice that you make and you decide and you have to choose wisely I love in Matthew chapter four, Peter makes a choice. He wasn't forced. It wasn't you have to. And so Jesus shows up and, and Peter's occupation, he was a fisherman. And so he would go out daily on the boat. He would catch fish. He'd bring him back, right? And that was his occupation. And one day Jesus shows up in the book of Matthew chapter four and he's like, Peter, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Right, there was a new occupation. There was a new opportunity and he had the choice. What am I going to do? And so Peter decides in that moment to grab the baton to run his leg of the race with the power of choice. And he chooses to follow Jesus. If you want to leave a legacy, you have to start with what matters most. Or right? if you want to leave a legacy, you have to start with what matters most. You cannot pass down something you do not possess. Right? And I want to pass down a legacy of generosity. If you don't give, you can't pass down something you don't possess. If you want to pass down a passionate, fo passionate example of following Jesus, then you have to possess a passionate following of Jesus. You see, we don't live in a society that says that with the generation that we're trying to, to model for, it's not a do as I say, not as I do. Right? They look right past that. This is a smart generation. Right? It's not like, oh, just, just do what I say. I don't have to do it. I'm not gonna model it for you. We have a generation that wants to lead. They wanna be empowered but they also want to see a movement that's modeled, right? They want to see something that they can chase after tangibly with their eyes, like, man, I see it. I, know, I now know how to love people because you love people. I now know how to serve because I've watched you serve. I know how to give because I've watched you sacrifice and give. I know how to worship because I've watched you worship. And so we need to make sure that we're passing down something that we possess. So the first key is you have to start with the baton. The second key is a runner receiving the baton cannot look back or swerve out of his or her lane. You can't swerve out of your lane. So when you see the runners, right, they're all in their lanes, inside to outside, and they're staying in their lanes. And here's what I know about running is you don't wanna look behind you, you wanna look in front of you. Looking, be, looking, looking in front of you is like, man, this is the target, this is the prize, you see the finish line. Looking behind you means I'm only curious as to what others are doing, not what I'm doing. Uh, the scripture in, uh, talks about this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. It says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see that word press? That means there's, it's going to take some inertia. It's going to take some movement. It's going to take some strength. It may not always be easy. There could be pain. There's pain in the promise sometimes. And so we have to be willing to press in. We got to be willing to, to have some grit, some, some stamina, and lean in and run the race to win the prize. I think about uh, Lot's wife in the book of Genesis. There's the biblical account uh, of Lot's wife and uh, his, his wife, uh, for whatever reason, we don't really see the, the explanation, but she turned around, right? So the, the, she turns around and when she turns around, 
she's turned into a pillar of salt. You're like, well, that seems a little harsh. Again, I don't know the reason. Maybe, maybe she was turning around to make sure her family was following. But maybe it's possible she turned around because she wanted to see what she was giving up. But here's what I know either way, is if, if, you, if what is behind you is more desirable than what is in front of you, then you may hand off the wrong legacy. Right? If, if you're so busy looking behind, like, oh, if only, in this, and that, and you're always, then you're missing what's in front of you, which is the prize, which is in Christ Jesus, which is heaven. And so we're, we're stuck on the, the place right here that's flat, and we're missing the eternal and so we need to make sure that our, our focus is where it needs to be, not behind us, but in front of us. The last key that I want to share with you this morning is the one that I want to sit on for the longest. It's this, is you have to be willing to make the handoff. Right? Julian couldn't run because he didn't, have the, he didn't have the baton. I didn't give it to him on purpose, and then I held on to it so he couldn't, he couldn't hand it off. But, but for us, if we want to leave a legacy, we have to be willing to hand off the baton. You see, it's the most important part of the race. You cannot keep the treasure for yourself. It's meant to be shared. It's meant to be shared with others. And you have to be willing to pass it on. And here's why. Passing it on is where breakthrough happens. Passing it on is where pre-bent dispositions are severed. Right? I, I, I was a fourth generation alcoholic. My great-grandfather was an alcoholic. My grandfather was an alcoholic. And my mother still is an alcoholic. And I was on that same path, that same trajectory. But I'm so grateful that now my family is second generation preachers. Right? Why? Because, because that's been severed. See, if you, if you go to Ancestry.com and you're like, oh, Perupski, and then you look up like Fenzal, that's my mother's maiden name, and you, you trace that back, you're going to see, oh, look, I see things in their, their lineage, like cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, you won't see that anymore. Now you're going to see found freedom, following after Jesus, right? Being a part of a, of a different legacy, because that's what happens when we pass on something other than maybe what was passed on to us. So passing it on is where world changers are born. Right? When we pass on that legacy, passing it on is where we see the power of influence come to fruition. Like, so this, this worship team is, is amazing, and I love, I love their hearts. That's where Kirsten spent the last year of her life, was at the University of Valley Forge. But what I do know as a parent is one of the hardest things to do was to get in the car and leave after I dropped her off. We were, on, we were on the highway for maybe 30 seconds. I look over at Pastor Angel. She's crying. I'm crying. I'm like, eh, I'm going to turn around. Right? I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go get her. This is bad. Right? But, it, but here's the deal. We're not omnipresent. We can't be in all places all at the same time. We're in one location at one time. And so I'm going to be six and a half hours away. But what am I going to do? How, well, I need to, I need to make sure as a dad that I've given the opportunity of influence, right? So I can't be there, but I'm hoping when Kirsten's there, she's like, man, what would my heavenly father ask of me in this situation? What would he want me to do in these moments? If my mom or my dad were with me, what would they say to me? What advice would they give me? What, wis what wisdom, what nugget of truth would they give me so I can make the wisest choice for my life? And so passing it on is about the power of influence coming to fruition. Passing it on is where dreams become realities. Passing it on is where we set the next generation up for success and not failure. Right? I, 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 for me, I believe it's time for us to leave this world better than what we inherited. And I'm not just talking about, fine, like, you're like, oh, yeah, we should leave money. No, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about legacy. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about experience. I'm talking about passion. Right? I tell our staff all the time, man, like, a project is done when it's completed, when everything is put back better than what you found it. Because if it's not put back better than what you found it, then the project's not over. It's not completed. And so we need to leave things better than what we inherited, which means we have to stay focused on what's most important. You see, the Bible gives us a few accounts of this taking place, of, of a legacy of the baton being passed. We see Moses to Joshua, right, passes. We see David to Solomon. We see Elijah to Elisha. We see Jesus to the disciples. And as individual disciples, we see, we see Paul to Timothy. You see, Timothy received the baton from Paul, and then he's instructed to pass it on to others. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 says, you have heard me teach these things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Did you hear that? Like, you've been past this. Don't let it die in your hands. Let it continue, which means we have to be willing to teach others. We have to be able to inspire the generations that will come after us, and we have to be willing to leave a legacy. George Bernard Shaw says this, life is so is no brief candle to me. 
It is a sort of splendid torch, which I've got a hold of for the moment. And I want, I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handling it and handing it off to the next generation. Right? It's a torch. I want to set it ablaze, and I want to be able to hand off something that's amazing. But what I do know is we need all types of people in our lives to be able to help when, when it comes to handing off and, and shaping our lives. I think about Paul. Paul was someone who, who would keep you accountable. Right? I love Paul, and he keeps us accountable. He keeps us accountable to the word and, and to following after Jesus. And, and we all need people who will keep us accountable. Not to like, oh, we need people who will hold our feet to the fire. Well, maybe at times. But what I do know about having people in, as a part of your circle and influence and keeping you accountable is I, I don't want people to always tell me what I want to hear. I need people to tell me what I need to hear. Like, man, this wasn't good. That was a poor decision. What about this? And, and, and saying, man, I, I just need to be honest and I need to be vulnerable. I wanna, I wanna build trust and so I'm gonna speak life. And sometimes speaking life is, is, is with love is having tough conversations. And so we need people who will keep us accountable. We also need uh, some Barnabas in our life, people who will encourage us, right? People who walk alongside us and, and lift us up. Look at the person next to you and say, I need some encouragement. And so maybe the person next to you is your Barnabas and they're gonna keep you, they're gonna inspire you, they're gonna encourage you, they're gonna tell you, man, I see you, well done, great job. I appreciate you, you have value. So we need people like Paul who will keep us accountable. We need people like Barnabas who will encourage us. And we need people like Timothy, someone that we can mentor. I, I love here at Radiant Life Church that, that we, can, we can have mentoring and reverse mentoring where, where, where the old sit with the young and the young sit with the old and there's some wisdom to be gleaned from every generation. And we need people who we can pass the baton off to. So we need those people in our life. We look closely at scripture and we see the baton being passed. The Old Testament story of King David and Solomon. David had a dream. David's like, man, I got this passion and, and I, wanna, I wanna build a house for the Lord. I wanna, I wanna build a temple where, where the Ark of the Covenant, which is God's presence, can dwell. And he has this dream and we see it in uh, 1 Chronicles 28, verse two. So David had great intentions. He prepared but the dream still went unfulfilled. Here, here it is in the text. It says, King David rose to his feet and said, listen to me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a place of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, for the footstool of our God, and I made plans to build it. But it was in that moment where it didn't come to fruition. So David had to pass the baton to Solomon. David's dream became Solomon's destiny. So David has a dream and he's like, it's not gonna be me, but Solomon, it's going to be you. And we see this taking place in 1 Chronicles 28, nine through 10. It says, and you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind for the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, Here's the, those words, hear those words. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a temple as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. He said, Solomon, I have this dream, but this dream will become your destiny. And now I want you, you choose, you consider, you make the choice to take this dream, to make it come to fruition. You see, every generation stands on the generation that went on before. Every generation, like we're standing on the shoulders of people who have sought the Lord. This church is 93 years old. Some of you are like, it doesn't look 93. The building is almost seven years old. But the heart of this church, the motivation of this church is 93 years old. The legacy of this church is 93 years old. And there are people in generations and generations upon generations whose shoulders we stand upon. See, a number of years ago, this thought hit me because my kids we're not young ladies, they were just little sweet baby girls. And so you see a picture like this and it's stirred. Oh, look, look at them cheeks, Liv. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's before all the sass entered the world. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but when I was, when my children were younger, this moment hit me of what do I want to leave for them? But it went further than that because it wasn't what do I wanna leave for them, it's what do I want to give them now, right? How many know there's a difference between leaving something and giving something? Leaving is, and like yesterday, I checked my 401k because I was like, one day I'll retire, like when I'm 90, and I was like, okay, what? And I was like, oh, up 7%, let's go, let's go, right? Um, and that's great because, it, I don't know, maybe I won't spend it all, and I'll be able to leave, leave funds to my children. 
Angel, when Pastor and Angel and I travel together, we went to Cabo in December. We leave all these things like, hey, here's our life insurance policy. Here's all these things. And then my kids were like, you're worth how much, Dad? And I was like, don't smile at that. That's, a bad, that's, that's not good. <laughs> but, but I can leave something. I could have an investment for them for their future. But that's not what I wanted to focus on. My focus was on what could I give them? How am I preparing them for the world that is to come? What am I doing to inspire dreams within them? What are they learning from me as their father? And that hit me hard as a dad. And I went, man, some things have to change in my life. Some focuses need to change because kids are always learning. The question that we have to ask is what are we teaching? And so I wanted to make sure when they were young that I was, and I still do, I want to make that investment. I want them to, to be able to call and me to be able to have some wisdom and to be able to, to say, man, hey, here's some, here's some choices. What do you think is the wisest choice to make? And so when they were younger, I wanted to make sure it wasn't what I wanted to leave, but what did I want to give? What did I want to hand off? And as a church, I think of that as, as your pastor. I'm like, man, what are they learning from me? Right, the scripture has, has uh, some, some things to say about those who preach the good news and those being judged a little bit stricter uh, one day because there's more responsibility. And I was like, man, I need to make sure that, that the church I'm pastoring, that they can lean in and learn a few things from me. Learn a few things maybe of what's not to do, but hopefully more things of what to do, what passion looks like, man, how to get in the word. And so we wanna make sure we're doing that because the church's success is determined by its ability to survive and excel from generation to generation. We have to excel. People, people will say this and I hear and I understand what it means. They're like, man, I don't wanna go to my grandparents' church. And I hear, I hear that. It's like, man, I don't want to be at a church with the B3 Hammond organ. Like, and it's just like, oh, gosh, I want some movement. Like, I don't need the haze, but maybe a light or two. Like, I need something a little bit more passion, a little bit more vibrancy. And I hear that. But, but at the same time, what I also love is here at Radiant Life Church, we have, a, we have so many and a plethora of spiritual grandparents that we need in this church, right, that we can lean into, that we can, we can go, man, there's something to be gleaned here. There's some wisdom because the many times the mission, the vision, the values, the purposes of God way outlive a person, right? What I'm so grateful for here at Radiant Life Church is, is the vision, the mission, the values of this church are not built on my wife and I, right? They're founded in scripture so that one day if the Lord called us away or one day when it's time for me to go, I had enough, right? And I'm gonna hand off the baton to, a, to another young man, another couple, another woman who will be the next lead pastor of this church, Right? It's not built on a personality. It's built on the foundations of who Christ is, right? And his word and his values and his mission. But we have to be willing to pass down successfully and pass that baton. But instead of experiencing generational friction and misunderstanding, I think it's time for us to strive for unity and continuity, to lean into, to glean some wisdom, to, to trust. You see, Solomon built the temple the temple took seven years to build. It was a wonder of the world. And it was built, here's what I love. It was built to David's dream and yet God's design, right? It was, it was, a, it was, it was amazing. It was built to David's dream and God's design. You see, we do our part successfully and then we pass the baton to the next generation. We keep the mission alive. We keep the church moving and marching forward when we pass down a legacy. And so this morning, I have two questions for you. The first one is this, are you willing to run? Are you willing to run? Because no one else can run your race. Only you can run your race. You can't run somebody else's race. You have to run your race. He has a calling for you. He has a dream for you. I want to do something a little bit special. If, if you're in the room this morning uh, and you have been a part of Radiant Life Church for more than 30 years, could you do me a favor and just stand to your feet? You've been a part of this church for more than 30 years. Yeah. Stay standing, stay standing. This is cardio. I'm, help, I'm helping the cartilage, that's all, right? You know what I mean? Here's, here's what I want to do, and I'm so grateful that you honored these individuals because all of these individuals grabbed this baton, they've run their race, and many of them have passed this baton. But here's, here's the thing though, when you look at passing the baton, the baton being passed does not mean you're done, it just means you're on a different leg. You're, running, you're still running the race until God is done with you, till you hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And one day, one day, right, as you slip into eternity, 
Your legacy will continue to live on. It's upon your shoulders that we stand. It's upon your service, your, your attitude. It's upon your life that we go, man, I want to be like Joy when I grow up one day. One day. Right? Yeah, Donna's like, mm, that's a hard pass for me, dog. Nope. <laughs> but your legacy will outlive you. You can be seated. Thank you. Your legacy will outlive you. Tina, the, Tina, it was a couple weeks ago, Tina came up to me and she said, Pastor, I'm just ready to go home. I just want to go home. And I told her over my dead body, you will not leave me. I was like, when you're 95, we'll have this conversation. But until then, that's not going to happen. Right? Because we need. We, we, we need each and every person serving. We need each and every person giving. And so it's so important for us to, to be able to look and say, man, I'm willing to run and I'm willing to pass the baton. Because it's not the end of the race. I'm just running a different leg. You see, it's those individuals that have paved the way and made an opportunity for us to run ours. And so we honor them, we give them thanks. But they've passed down some great things to us. And I could, I could stand here and, and talk about, man, what are the things that we're gonna pass down? I know some things we don't wanna pass down, right? We don't wanna pass down unforgiveness. We don't wanna pass down debt. We don't wanna, we don't wanna pass down uh, grief and frustration or regrets or poor habits. And so this morning, I wanna give you real quick four things that you can pass down. These are gonna be fast is the first thing we can pass down is we can pass down that we need to lead with love. If you ask my girls after service, they're gonna tell you this. This, isn't, this is more Pastor Angel than it was me because she's definitely the better parent than I am. Um, but, but, but she told all of our girls at a young age, what are the two things I want you to know? That I love you and I'm proud of you. Always know that I love you. No matter where you're at, I love you and I'm proud of you. Now you're like, even when they make bad choices, we still love them as a person. We may not be proud of the choice they made, but we love them for who they are. And so we need to lead with love. You know who do we need to lead with love with? The vulnerable, the tough to love, the Karens of the world, the lost, the hurting, uh, those with different political beliefs, the know-it-all coworker who's never made a poor decision in their life. I mean, it, it, can you just imagine if we led with love? Like, oh man, you know, because it, it gets ugly. It gets ugly around, it's time to vote. Like, ah, and now I'm, gonna, I'm on social media and I need to tell you why your candidate's horrible and why uh, I'm wrong. And, uh, could we just lead with love for a minute? Can we lead with love with people who are difficult to love? You see, we need to love people when they least expect it and least deserve it. Right, I have some amazing neighbors, they attend the church, but I don't know, it's our neighborhood, I love our neighborhood, there's lots of kids, there's lots of uh, dog owners. Like I think to be a, a resident in our neighborhood, you have to own more than one dog, I'm not sure how we made it because we only have one, but everybody's got multiple dogs and they walk these dogs, it's like, it's like a dog park, really. Um, but then you have the neighbors. You have the neighbors that, that you're like, oh man, I have to love this person even though they walk their dog on my front yard and then their dog does their business and then they walk off with their dog business in my front yard. And I have a dog too, but my dog's in the backyard. So if you come pick up after my dog, I'll pick up after your dog. You have to love those people too, right? It's not like you're gonna sit in your front yard with a sign. If your dog poops in my yard, I will put it back in your pocket. Like, no, you can't do that. Like this, this is not how it works. And so do we lead with love? And so we love people when they least expect it and they least deserve it. But we can also pass down an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. First Thessalonians 5 says, give thanks in all circumstances. Here's what I know. What you feed your mind fuels your focus. What you feed your mind fuels your focus. When my children were young, and you're gonna hear this in all these examples. When a, when a first responder, firefighter, right? Medic, ambulance, a police. Anytime there, we would see and there would be sirens on, if we were in the car together, we would pause as a family and we would pray. We didn't know the search situation. We didn't know if it was a major accident, a minor accident, if it was just a, you know, a carbon monoxide detector going off or, or a fire ablaze. If the person in the ambulance was, we didn't know if they were in there or not in there. They were on the way to the scene or on the way to the hospital, but we would strategically stop and we would pray for every first responder and every individual. It was a heart. We wanted to pass down a legacy of, of, man, we want to have an attitude of gratitude. We're thankful for those who serve, who give, who don't get holidays off. And maybe, maybe it's time to head to Walmart after church and get some thank you cards, right? And just, just hand write, man, I see you, I noticed you, I love you, and I'm grateful for you because I have an attitude of gratitude. Something new for me, I'm trying. If you know me, there's, there's, I used to be a very picky eater. There were very few things actually I would eat. And so... My wife is an amazing cook and I, my, my palate is changing and I'm liking flavors and food and, and that's great. But one thing I don't like 
is melted cheese on a hamburger. I don't like cheeseburgers, I like hamburgers. But wherever I go to order burgers, they always have cheese on them. And so I will go through a drive-through and I'm in a hurry, I'm like, hey, can I get this value meal with no cheese? And they're like, so you want a cheeseburger, no cheese? I was like, yes, because you don't have a value meal with hamburgers. I'm trying to make it easier on you. Like you, I'm eliminating a step of preparation. That's how much I care about you people. Like, and I'm saving you five cents of cheese. Like I'm, and I'm not asking for a refund. I'm keeping it simple. But it used to frustrate me and it would make me so angry because I was like, I just, I have one request. That's all, just one, no cheese. And you put on six pieces of cheese and I just want no cheese. But something new I've been doing is when it comes that way, because it does and it will, as I scrape off the cheese, I say, man, I'm grateful that I have food to eat. I'm grateful for the food that's in front of me because there are hundreds and thousands and millions of people on planet earth who would die for this cheese. And so I've turned this attitude, why? Because whatever you feed your mind fuels your focus. And I wanna make sure I have an attitude of gratitude. But we can also pass down a heart that says, I'm saved to serve. Right, I've been saved to serve. Mark 10, 45, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. You don't have to, you get to. Right, you don't have to serve, but what an opportunity that we get to serve. When our children were younger and we'd come to church and we'd have the, like the seat backs in front of you whenever we say that, and I'll come down. Um, we would bring our kids with us on Saturdays and we would straighten all the seat backs and all the cards and make sure they were all cute and the offering envelopes. Uh, and you can see, I'm very particular, if they're not straight, that means one of you touched it and we'll talk after service. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But, but so they would straighten them and, and, and they'd be like, dad, why, why are we doing this? And so this is what we did. We said, hey, we don't have to, we get to. So here's what I want you to do. Every time you straighten a card, would you pray for that chair? Would you pray for that person who's gonna be in that chair? Because Sunday's gonna happen. And there may be someone who comes and sits in that chair and their world is falling apart. They're hurting, they're broken, and they're looking for hope. And I want you to pray that when they walk into this building and they sit in that chair, that they experience the power, the presence of a loving God who meets them right here in this place. And I said, we don't know. You never know, it could be someone's first Sunday. Every Sunday is someone's first Sunday. And so someone may come and they may be so far from Christ. This may be their first time ever walking through the doors of any church and they pick this church and we don't know what, who, if that person would sit there, but if they do, we want them to know their chair is prayed over, that they are loved, that they are valued, that they are welcomed, that they're not just guests, they're family, and that they have an opportunity to give their life to Jesus and, and that their life could be different, the trajectory of their life could be different. And so kids, we don't have to do this, we get to do this. And so we're saved to serve. So we can lead with love, we can have an attitude of gratitude. We can let them know we're saved to serve. But lastly, we can hand down what matters most. And that's the focus on the foundation. The foundation upon which we stand, the rock, Jesus himself, is our, is our life, our passion for Jesus. Is, is, is he the primary focus? Is he the center of all that we do? Because that is a legacy worth passing down. Do we get into the word on a daily basis with our children, with our worship, Right, you can be a thermostat or a thermometer. A, ther a, a thermometer reads the temperature. The thermostat sets the temperature. Like, no, I'm just gonna wait until somebody else does. Somebody else does, maybe I will. Right, the thermostat says no from beginning. I'm gonna worship the Lord passionately. And so we set the foundation right, which is the focus on who Jesus is. Church should not be optional. And you're like, that's why we're here. That's why I love it because it's, it's something that, that we do together as a family. It shouldn't be, well, if something better comes along, it should be, I can't miss, because I want the foundation of what my family is gonna be built upon to be Jesus. So today, I'm just gonna ask you to close your eyes. We're gonna end service in just a moment. But if you're here this morning, you're watching online, I opened the service saying that you have to start with the baton and that the baton, the race, is about relationship a relationship with Jesus and we're closing with that we have to focus on the foundation, the firm foundation, the foundation that, that we're building upon Jesus. The foundation matters, right? When the winds come, they blow the house down if the foundation isn't secure. When the storms of life come, that foundation, if it's not secure, if it's not founded in Jesus, the house is gone. 
But when we focus on what matters most, which is Jesus, and we have a relationship with Jesus, and we start with him, and we build upon him in our life and our legacy, then we're starting correctly. So if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Lance, I don't have that foundation. I've, I've never given my life to Jesus. I want you to know that the right time to do the right thing is right now. Don't wait. So if you're online, one of our hosts would love to pray with you. If you're in the room this morning, I, I would love the honor to pray with you. So if that's you and you wanna give your life to Jesus, you wanna build upon that foundation, would you raise your hand all over this place? No one looking around. I wanna be able to pray with you this morning. Say, that's me. I wanna give my life to Jesus. I wanna build on the right foundation, firm foundation of Jesus. Thank you. So Jesus, we come to you. We're grateful that the veil was torn, that we don't need a high priest, so we can come and intercede and we can have communion and fellowship and direct access to you. So God, today as we approach that throne of grace, Lord, I'm so thankful for every hand and every heart that's abandoned towards you, that says, I want a relationship with you. God, we admit our need. We believe you are the one true son of God and we confess our sins and we ask for you, for you to partner, to come into our life, to enter the cavity of our heart. That that chasm was wide, that separated us from the father, but Jesus, by giving your life, you made a way where there was no way. And now we are reconciled back to our father. And Jesus, we love you, we accept you. Lord, we, we pray pray, Lord, that, that today would be the, that at, as we make this choice, it's the most important choice we could ever make. So we choose wisely this day for as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you're here this morning, you say, man, I want to build my life, my legacy with a firm foundation, making sure that Jesus is first. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do all over this place. The worship team's gonna sing in just a moment. And would you make the lyrics of this song your declaration? Say, he's going to be my firm foundation. It's gonna be Jesus. I will build upon the life of Jesus. So when they begin singing at any moment while they're singing, if that's your heart, I would just encourage you as an act of surrender to just raise your hands and allow your voice to to make a declaration of faith that says, Jesus, it's about you. I'm gonna build a legacy because I wanna hand it off one day, but it's gonna be firm because it's built upon who you are. Are. So it starts with you, Jesus. Have your will and your way in our lives.